Hi everyone! Welcome to this new video of Vanessa Miniatures Painting Recipes. I have a variety of topics to tackle with you today as we go over my latest Langor painting. I will show you how I painted the fur, the red leather, the horns, the claws, and the gold armor. If there's any specific topic you were searching for and would prefer to skip directly to that part, you can do so through the description below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you would like to support this channel. You can also comment below if you have anything you would like to see me paint for a future video. Without further ado, let's get painting. I began by basing this whole model in shyish purple. It's a dark purple that will make an excellent base for most of the elements in this miniature. Prior to base coating, I had prepared the slingor with a zenithal to determine my light source. What I want to do now is cover the model but respect the zenithal as well. Since shyish purple is a thick contrast, I added water to thin it down where the light is the strongest, wet blending directly as I apply it. If you feel like the paint is too thick or too dark, just add a little bit of water directly on your brush and push the paint toward the shadows. Moving on to violet red as a first layer of fur. For now, I apply this color over the lightest areas where the light hits directly. Since this layer has been thinned down, I use its translucency to cover the shadows partially, pushing the paint up to the light. That's one way you can create an intermediate color for a better blending. Next, I'll be introducing ivory in my violet red to create a lighter tone. I'm using a worn out brush that will be perfect to stipple a fur texture. I always start where the light is the strongest, and as the paint wear off my brush, I simply damp it a little to work on the darker areas. This way, the paint is thinner where you need it to. See here as there is barely any paint left on the brush, that's when I work on the shadow area so that it looks darker than the area that is more into the light. 
I will add even more ivory into the mix. As of now, it should equal about two parts of ivory for one part of violet red. I will do exactly as I did on the previous step, except I try to focus more on the center of the light source area. You can also have a glazed version of this color or dampen your brush as I did before to go over the area and blend in the colors. This way, your first strikes will look more natural. We finish up this fur with pure ivory, this time painting on the lighter focus points of each shape of the beast's body. Time to hop on that sexy red leather. Glory to Slanish! Starting off with Wine Red, one of my favorite red paint. You want it translucent at first, so thin it enough so you can see the dark purple through that red. Just leave the recesses purple and blend in the red by pushing the paint towards the light areas. Once this is done, then you can come with a second layer to saturate your red where the light focus is. With Ruby, sketch in your first highlights. The highlight with this color needs to be large. We will narrow it down as we use lighter colors.
With a thin down ivory, continue your sketch to enhance the luminosity on the leather. Since this first layer of ivory might be a bit translucent, you may go back with your ivory for a second layer, but make it a little bit more narrow so that it looks like a different color, more pale in the middle. You might find the leather a little bit pinkish right now, but don't worry. We'll fix that in a moment. Going back to wine red, I create a glaze, a very translucent layer. Make sure you wipe the excess water on your thumb or a towel. There is a fine line between a glaze and a wash. You don't want water going down into your recesses. We want to have perfect control. With this red, we are going to go over the ruby, even slightly over the ivory. You want to push the paint towards the red that you can still see from your first step. This will blend your highlights better and bring back that beautiful red tone thanks to the undercoat of Salmon Pink. The horns are going to be very simple. Start up by base coating over your purple with a black. I chose a contrast black legion for its fluidity and also because it keeps a lighter tone where the zenithal is. With burnt umber, I layer over the edge of the horn's texture, covering most of its front and back.
with dark brown, I do exactly the same as the previous step, but on a smaller area, focus towards the light. Finally, with light earth, we light up the horns edges even more. The only thing you really have to think about in this step is where your light hits and if there are any cast shadows. Keep your paint well diluted so it flows properly. The claws are the simplest to paint. Using purple, we will dry brush over them and pick up the details. Dry brushing implies you need to wipe off as much of the moist in the paint as you can. This is why you put a little bit of paint on the brush without mixing in any water. Beat the brush on your thumb until there's just a little bit of pigment left. This way, you don't have to worry about smudging your miniature. After going over the whole claws with purple, I use intense pink, still as dry brush, to highlight the top. This will just give it a little tint of pink. Finally, with ivory, I edge highlight with my liner brush. This is my first time using it for this, and it was sort of a test. The control is not as good as a smaller brush, but you can load more paint on. So if you feel confident in your control, go for it. Once I was done with edge highlighting, I thinned down my ivory and glazed over the claws to give it a shine and blend in the edges.
For the gold, we are going to start with Japanese brown directly over the shyish purple. We are using that purple as an undercoat and a shadow color. With ochre, we place the first highlights. This will also serve as a reflective or bounced highlight on the gold. That's why, as you go, you have to think about where your main highlights are going to be, but also the reflected ones. For more info on that matter, I suggest watching this other video on gold armor. The next highlight is ivory. As you can see, I don't mix my colors in a blend so much because I want a higher contrast for the metallic effect. To know where your highlight goes, you have to think of each shape individually and how it will react to the light source. This is a very simple gold recipe. Four colors, all in all, including the initial shyish purple. This is a sketching approach to non-metal metal that looks quite nice as a tabletop gold. I use it all the time on my commission work.
You don't need to use the white, but if you feel like giving your gold an extra shine, you can paint the tip, like the very center of your light, with just little dots of white to make it even more bright. And there is your final look. I hope you liked this video. If so, please show your support in any way you can by liking, subscribing, commenting, or moving on to my next video. Read the description below for more ways to find me and support my work. Thank you for watching. See you next time.